welcome back to Bike Tech, my name's Matt and today this is an extension to the electric supercharger rant video I did quite a while back and we're still going to do the experiment and so on and so forth but um, there was a lot of views etc, a lot of comments, a lot of people going ah you're a dick, fair enough you obviously don't understand what you're on about so I'm here to put you straight so a lot of people put comments saying oh you haven't seen this article, Volvo has done it and then people started saying Audi and all these other people, there's a lot of stuff that people pointed out which I actually couldn't find any evidence for, I don't know what they're talking about. But let's look at the Volvo system that a lot of people directed me to. I had actually read the article before I even put the video up, but um, we're going to look at some of the images that come with the article of Volvo's testbed engine. I haven't seen this engine in person unfortunately, but from the, vid from the pictures we can actually see um, how this entire system works. So we're going to have a quick scan at the pictures and then I'll do a couple of drawings just to show you what's going on and why they are doing it. So one of the first pictures you can see is uh, this engine sat on its frame and it has a uh, two mechanical turbochargers and I will do a video on turbochargers and how they work and stuff. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube you can already see um, but it has two mechanical um, what we'd call normal conventional turbochargers and then it has this extra section here with a lot of funky pipe work and what have you and this extra impeller housing here is what I would call a electric precharger this is not a standalone system what Volvo are using this for is a precharger so before we get into what prechargers are we need to very very briefly as quick as possible look over how mechanical superchargers work and what their problem is and why this precharger even has to exist in the first place. So really basically a mechanical supercharger and this is a cross section has a impeller which internals look like something like that and your impeller sits here and it has a shaft and then it has a turbine and then it has a uh, intake and same kind of thing like so am I doing this right? yeah so you have the turbine end, you have the impeller end you have a shaft with bearings that runs in between it and the whole way this system works is the turbine takes exhaust gases, so when your um, exhaust valve opens, all the schmoo and shit and smoke and all of it comes flying out, and it's very hot, you'll know if you've ever touched an exhaust pipe. So the turbine is exactly, it's not exactly, but it's like turbines, you get a power station. A turbine extracts the heat energy that is in the exhaust flow, it's not how much pressure it has and speed, people who write that are fucking idiots. It extracts the heat energy from the flow of the exhaust system and turns it into mechanical motion, in this case rotation. The shaft in the middle transfers this mechanical rotation, this torque, down this shaft to an impeller. An impeller is like a fan type pump that displaces air. So the impeller turns this mechanical motion and it imparts this, which means give. It gives the incoming air that's been drawn in by the piston of your engine imparts this mechanical motion of its rotation to the air. This air then gains velocity and this velocity is then dumped in the the velocity of the air, the higher velocity is then dumped into the manifold. So the impeller housing with the impeller inside and it's just here with all its lovely blades and what have you. The impeller housing looks like this, this is a little diddy one, you can see where I've got the shape from. The impeller draws air in by creating a low pressure, um, a low pressure region in front of the impeller, and accelerates the air out. So it's constantly, basically, it's sucking air in. The faster it goes, the more it sucks air in. It then whizzes the air around and deposits the air into the manifold. The manifold then gives the air to the inlet port. Now, a turbo system is all based on the timing of the in, the timing of the in. Uh, the timing of the inlet valve opening is between when it closes and when it opens again. Basically all an impeller does is it keeps on shoving air in into this manifold until the pressure in the manifold increases. Increases. 
So it's the pressure in the manifold that increases. The impeller is exactly as it states. If you read up what an impeller is, it's a positive displacement pump. It is shoving air in it in this contained volume quicker than would be under na under normal pressure. So basically, all this is is it's a, a blower. It's a, a an air fan. It's a you know a very well designed air fan, but it's an air fan that's basically pushing in more air into here than it could. Uh, uh, atmospheric pressure normally contain. If you squeeze more air into a contained volume obviously the pressure starts to go up and the pressure will continue to go up until it can push past the impeller. This is called a surge when an impeller cannot keep up with demand um, or the pressure behind it, the back pressure in the manifold. And then the inlet valve opens and all this gets dumped, not all of it, the added pressure in here gets dumped into the cylinder until this equalises just about atmospheric pressure and then usually the valve shuts off before that even happens. Um, because we've got to involve uh, flow characteristics and flow velocities, that's kind of what happens. This is a very simple explanation. So now I've got a very brief explanation of how the internals convert heat energy of the exhaust into mechanical energy of the impeller. Now we can look at the rest of the system, which is the intake side. So air is drawn into the impeller because a low pressure region is created in front of it. The air um, increases velocity and actually weirdly enough drops pressure. When you speed air up pressure drops just like in a carb but there will be another video on that. And the impeller can um, output more air, uh, no it increases the flow rate of just say this cross sectional area here. It rams more and more in, more and more and more and more in, because the uh, mechanical energy that's stored in the impeller as it's rotating is imparted into the air, which increases its velocity. <laughs> Basically, it makes air go quick. And just like with a compressor or something, when you, or an air gun, should I say, when you squirt a lot of air into somewhere quick, the pressure increases. And the pressure drops back down in here, all this air in here wants to expand into the cylinder and then the valve closes so you've got more air in your cylinder. If you have more air you have more oxygen, if you have more oxygen you can have more fuel, you get more of a bang, you get more power so the power of the engine goes up. So that's a turbo in a nutshell. I will do a proper video explaining a lot of the characteristics of turbos and blah blah blah, blah and so on and so forth. So this entire system is dependent on quite a few things, the mass of things, um, the pressure and density of the air around it, the uh, energy in the exhaust flow, how much heat you can retain, there's leakage in the impeller, there's leakage in the turbine, so on and so forth. But the main thing we're concerned with here is the mass of the impeller. The impeller is a usually an aluminium finned disc, a, a fan so to speak, and the turbine blades are usually something like a sexy nickel alloy or a titanium alloy. Uh, usually in Canel, which is a nickel based alloy which is really good at taking high temperatures while re retaining its strength. Any road, this thing takes time to speed up. So let's just say we've got seconds down here and this is arbitrary, it doesn't really matter. And we want to go from 1000 RPM to 9000 RPM. And this is 1000. So this is time in seconds and when you stick your foot down it goes up like this. Now your impeller speed the faster the impeller goes, the more efficient it becomes, and it's kind of got like a power band in a sense, like an engine. It's all about breathing. Um, your, in, your impeller's got to go from 25,000 RPM here to 150, but it ends up doing it over here. So we'll say this is 150k, and it just does a similar kind of thing. But you can notice that this area here is the turbo's efficiency. This is the impeller efficiency speed. So from here, to here, this amount of time, the engine has got to 9,000 RPM, this has to get to 150,000 RPM, and this time here between when your engine actually gets to that speed to when you're actually getting the most boost from your the maximum you can compress in your manifold where your turbo is working and it's most efficient, this is called lag. And this is the problem, and this is why the electronically assisted supercharger jobby that's on the Volvo is involved at all whatsoever. So turbo lag is basically a uh, turbo's inability to instantly speed up. You stick your foot down, the engine starts to climb RPM. The turbo has to lag behind the engine. The engine has to speed up to create enough gases that are then imparted onto the turbo 
and then the mass of the components, the turbine, the impeller, the actual shaft, then have to speed up and this energy has to be imparted in that. This takes time and this takes time longer than it does for the engine to accelerate because the engine's actually under power where that power has to be made first for the turbo to be able to recover that power because at the end of the day that's what a turbo supercharger is. It is a it's, it extracts waste power that's in the exhaust gases to try and boost the performance of the engine by putting some of that recovered power back into the engine in the form of compressing the air so you get more oxygen fuel, bang, pop and all the rest of it. So why have the electric supercharger or the, as I say, the electric aided supercharger for the Volvo? It has two turbos that are mechanical turbos because mechanical turbos for their weight are actually brilliant and very efficient at um, recovering some of the lost energies that are in the exhaust gases. So Volvo have decided, and a lot of companies have obviously followed suit, electric motors have one thing over the car full stop and you'll see stuff like Tesla cars and stuff race these big massive big powerful V8s and stuff at the drag strip. One great thing about electric motors is they have instant, let's say instant just for argument's sake, it's a couple of milliseconds, but they have instant maximum torque from the get go and torque is the force we need to that actually start moving your vehicle, in this case usually cars. So because the um, uh, electric motors are great at instant torque, it means that you can speed up an impeller through gearing or you can just build a motor to do it in the first place. It means that even though these two small turbochargers still have lag, um, this impeller, which is basically the impeller off a turbo with an electric motor attached to it, can instantly, pretty much instantly get up to speed, you know, we're talking maybe a third of a second or a quarter of a second or something like that. Feed the engine boosted, boosted air, so it's got really low bottom end torque, and then when the mechanical superchargers catch up, it can either do two things. It can either top up every time you change gear um, so when you change gear the uh, wastegate usually operates because you've got to dump some of the exhaust gases in your turbo and then this little electric thing can just slot in there and basically fill up the little gaps so if you look at you're going long and then you drop and you drop and you drop every time you basically stick your clutch in and change gear in a car the little turbo uh, electric turbo supercharger can fill in these gaps because the pressure in your manifold will also look like this so instead you get a much smoother power delivery out of your engine even though you're changing gears in between so why the hell do this in the first place and is this an electric supercharger it's an impeller with an electric motor in but I wouldn't call it like I said I'd call it an electric assisted engine or I'd call it a pre-charger um, when people think of electric superchargers, they think of, and a lot of people's arguments were, well, turbo systems cost shitloads of money and you've got to get someone to do it properly. With an electric turbo and supercharger, I could just do it myself. I could, you know, get the impeller, get an electric motor, sort it all out, batteries, a little bit of Raspberry Pi or Arduino or something as a microcontroller, and bingo, away you go. So I wouldn't say, this isn't a standalone electric supercharger. To say it is an electric supercharger, is a bit silly because turbos and um, just superchargers, general roots blow ones on it, a lot of them actually have electronic control aided things that either restrict the Venturi at the beginning, the ECU control and the whole system full stop, you could say most of them with electronic wastegates, with blow off valves that you know electronically control blow off valves. So this isn't an electric supercharger car, this is an electrically assisted pre-boost or whatever you want to call it. I don't think it qualifies an electric supercharger. Yes, it might be a distant relative and it's just showing you where they're wanting to go, but it still doesn't detract from my first video of me saying how difficult it is to make an electric supercharger, where you have an impeller and a motor and then that's it. There's no mechanical turbos in there. And this then begs the question, why have Volvo done this at all? So Volvo have done this for two reasons. It's a proof of it's a, what you call a POP, which is a proof, a proof, proof of principle, if I can fucking say it. Um, 
if they want to actually one day move to an electric supercharger, they need to do the groundwork first and test the systems and see if there's any drawbacks. It's also to test how much it costs, as in manufacturing costs, component costs, and what companies like motor makers and stuff that they have to actually speak to and how this is going to affect the systems that they want to run on. Um, the other thing is as well is that having zero lag with a, um, a boosted um, electric supercharger or precharger like they have is really only good for racing. If you see it in a modern day pedestrian car it's all about marketing wank. You know, it's so that if you've got last year's or a Volvo from two or three years ago, this thing goes faster. When you put your foot down, it's instant on the grunt, it's low end torque, you go, oh, this is such a better car, so you dip in your wallet and buy the new Volvos. It has no actual practical application. You get rid of lag, you know, it's so you can mow down people in the street quicker. There's no real reason for it. So, for racing, obviously, it's... Um, you know, it has its benefits because you try to get around the track as fast as possible. But then saying that, you know, McLaren and other companies are going in another way where they have electric motors that just go straight to the wheels and that seems to be a much better use of heavy batteries and heavy motors. So, um, that's what the Volvo system, from what I can tell, is pretty much looks like. There looks like there's a lot of other... Fucking spider. <laughs> there's a lot of... Um, piping in there all involved. This is probably to divert flows and what have you when the mechanical turbos take over because then you do not want this um, electrical system, this electric powered impeller acting as a restriction if it can't keep up. Um, I still stick with what I said that really what the car manufacturers want is a 12 volt motor because everything in the car is 12, mol 12 volts, even starter motors and they're very high torque um, motors. So they want a 12 volt system because one it's safe and the entire rest of the car works on a system like that. You know, BMW a few years back did a camless engine with using solenoids like Renault's system in a, in a sense. Um, it was electric solenoids to use as valves. The thing required a 48 volt system. It's a good, it's noisy as hell as well, but it was a good system um, you know, you recover a lot of power that you usually lose in the valve train, it's a hell of a lot lighter because you lose a lot of the valve train components. Power's up, it's lighter, but it was 48 volt system, so they abandoned it. That just shows you the power of wanting to use a 12 volt system. They make a camless engine that runs, yeah it's really fucking noisy but it was a prototype, but because it was a 48 volt system, they abandoned it. Um, and didn't carry on going on with it, you know, yes they could have made it better, but straight off the get-go they were saying to them to have solenoids that are powerful enough to move the mass of them weights we're going to have to use big fucking solenoids which need 48 volts so they shelved that project having a 12 volt system seeing as though the entire car industry and bike industry are based around 12 volts uh, light bulbs, starter motors, you know, it's car stereos, speakers you know most things in your car or everything in your car, the windscreen wipers uh, the injectors, everything runs off 12 volts apart from the spark plug starting system. You know, they'd have to convince a lot of suppliers around them to go to just say 48 volts or something like that, and they don't want, you know, it's very hard for them to do that. This is the old Betamax VHS kind of thing. If you go down that path alone, you could end up on your own and just piss everyone off. Um, anyway, so we are going to move on in the near, near future. There's trying to get the ER5 done and out of the way, we're getting quite close with that and I will move on to the um, manifold test we're going to use with a few motors that I've collected and a test rig up I've set up with an impeller um, so we could do some tests and experiments and see how hard it is to make an electric supercharger. Anyway, that was the Volvo system, it is not a complete full independent electric system, it has two turbos, you can see for yourself. Um, I will do some more videos on this subject, so uh, yeah, stick around and I'll see you in a bit.